let's pick up our contemplation from chapter 2 verse 16 and this is still Janaka speaking and Janaka is saying looking at one and seeing many is the cause of all misery looking at one and seeing many is the cause of all misery the only cure is to realize what is seen is not there. I am one, aware, blissful, immaculate. He's quite uh, absolute in his statements. He says, looking at one and seeing many is the cause of all misery. Is it possible to have misery, to suffer, to be miserable without duality? There was not this me and another. What misery would there be? Looking at once, seeing many. That's the story of our life. The looking is only, we see only one appearance. But we believe that we are seeing many. What makes that distinction? And many times, Upon hearing this, also there can be a distinction made, which is that ah, all of this is one, all of this is one here. It doesn't count this. So even this body, even the seemingly inner perceptions here, are part of the one appearance. This is a subtle ways in which the mind can still make some separation. Many times people hear this that all is one and we can feel like, oh, I love everyone. So it can feel like I, as somebody, must now love everyone because they are one with me. See? Even in saying something so beautiful as that, there can be duality. They are one with me. Not that it is all one. So we are looking at one. Unconsciousness, one being. Or if that is not clear, then at least one waking state. All objects within the same waking state. And seeing many as if they are many. It's the cause of all misery. I have said often that. The ego is a 3D ego. What is the 3D? You can say. But the 3Ds is going to be like the cat story. <laughs> Everyone knows the cat story. Who can say it? Nobody. <laughs> Pretty simple. Yes or no? No. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yes. So the root of this, to do something, or oh, this written test coming soon. How <laughs> <laughs> uh, you give the fish man. <laughs> So the root of all of this suffering is this duality. I am something. Going from just I am being just now, you just are I am. There is existence which is effortless. Existence which is effortless. 
okay there are two aspects to it. this world is duality you see pain and pleasure good and bad black and white appearance of one world one universe you see now if it is seen that it is one you see then we step back from that duality otherwise we participate in that duality you see by our belief think this i prefer this i don't prefer we participate with our concepts but if we step back from this it is still seen that the world is everything is duality light and dark everything is duality in this design of this world but we see that it is one world which has two aspects just like you might see that some of you have seen the statue of shiva and shakti as one statue so sometimes we can look at something and see only one aspect of it and then it can feel like oh this is we make a conclusion about the world it is like this you see the world is full of suffering it is also full of joy and in my contemplation i have seen that when everything translates into this manifest creation then everything is available in equal doses you see there is nothing which is lopsided in fact the times in which balance seems to get overridden then it is said that the great avatars and the sages come to restore the balance so the balance is a beautiful beautiful thing to see in this realm that's why we can see that any conclusion that we make is it is not true ultimately because it's always taking a side if the world is full of suffering not the true conclusion if the world is only joyful not the true conclusion the world is only bliss bliss not the true so nothing we can conclusively say because it is this it is the balancing of the yin and the yang and there is a constant in the design of it there is a stress between the opposites this is a place in this constant round and round with this constant stress of the opposite so to see the world as a dual world but to see that you are not participating in that duality you are not a object within this dual world in the world the appear the world appearance i mean maya in that way is one maya one play one dila whatever you call it you see so then you see that ah, i is not subject to the duality of this world and then that is the dropping of resistance see, what is just is and what is can be just what is without resistance then there can be no ego and that what is includes the movement of this body everything can be heard as if i am an individual entity and now i am going to decide to let, let everything be as it is see but that's not what i'm saying i'm taking a step back from this position and in, i'm including the movements the words and the actions of this body also in the what is then the false delusion of all this duality desire worship also you see all of this play as one play that is what you are seeing it our seeing is always true it is our interpretation which makes it seem like i am part of this duality so coming to this recognition of the source or coming to the recognition of awareness takes us away from this idea that i am contained in this world of blood can we just see that there is one appearance is it am i an appearance what is the definition of appearance it is this that which comes and goes so that which comes and goes is called an appearance am i an appearance and if i also come and go this day will say the same i do not come and go if i also came and went who would see this the reporting that i come and go would not be possible at all there must be a constant which is able to see the change if there is no constant witness then change cannot be reported so consciousness at rest 
consciousness at rest one of the primal powers of consciousness is perception if you mean consciousness at rest you mean that which is not yet i am just i is it not yet i am it is not arisen from its source it's not appeared from the self as a manifest existence is it so if you mean that like the non phenomenal the minimal the deep sleep is it then there is no perception is it and yet there is awareness because otherwise i would not be able to say there is no perception so tricky yes huh? uh, don't try to understand it just hear the words is it because you cannot understand it in that way now we are saying there is perception when i am the power of perception is that we perceive we see or we perceive the sight the hearing the smell the taste all this perception is that now before i am even this perception is not there because there is no phenomena to perceive and there is no existence sense of existence which is the perceiver or the creator or the light of this entire realm and you right? now even to make this report i must be aware of it or i must be talking out of my head see either i'm just making this up that there is no perceiver when in deep sleep state there is no perceiver there is no perception you see so either we had the experience of deep sleep or deep sleep is just a common myth that all of us share you see so because we are aware that there is a time where not even perception is not even the sense of perceiver is but there must be even a witness of that so that which is usually the subject for all other objects which is this consciousness is also ultimately an object for the ultimate subject which is awareness now in the play of consciousness then come all of these powers you see there is presence there is perception there is time there is space there is light there is all of this there is body usually there is there is the appearance of this dual world when this consciousness is done playing then it goes back into the source where all of this no trouble deep sea no perception no separation no identity nothing everything is gone. And yet, you are aware that there is something called sleep. Of course, you can report it only when this phenomenal appearance is there. So, the power of perception relies on this primal power called attention. There is no perception without attention, and yet there is awareness without attention. You can see perception fading. Even when we run out of attention, usually late at night. I take this example because it often happens with me that uh, I'm reading something, and I'm watching something, I'm watching, hearing some music, something. And after a while, you feel like you can watch, but the attention is depleting. It's getting withdrawn out from out of this world, and something is just resting back in the source. You see, and then soon even this sense that I am vanishes. then from there nothing to report nothing to see no so what arises is one consciousness one beingness and all this world of appearances is one and you can try this for yourself you cannot create the idea of two just in the mere perception it must be perception with some interpretation or judgment when the seed says all i see is one it is not that now he is not able to perceive that there are two bodies in front of there any bodies in front it is just that 
all this pool of perceptions is happening in one, the one consciousness. So often we do this exercise. Where is the experience of sight happening? Where is the experience of hearing happening? Where is the experience of any phenomenon? And so even in spirituality, there are two ways. So many ways, but main among them are these two ways. One is that we start the presumption that the separation happened. There is a real person here. And how to make it a better person first, good person, telling the truth, away from greed and lust and all the other things which seem to get in the way of spirituality according to that. And then getting to the point where ultimately the truth is recognized that you are one. Now that is not Ashtavakra's view. Ashtavakra view is one preparatory verse and then hundreds of verses talking about the one. <laughs> Remember the one preparatory verse. What is it? Sincerity, forgiveness, kindness, truth. Yeah, one more. Experiences from the senses as poison. <laughs> Turn your attention to words. All these. That's the only preparatory words. Yes. This is ways to point like this and say, right now, can't you see that you are one? To see is important. Not what you think or believe or interpret or judge. Witness. He says, You are the one solitary witness of all there is. That's such a beautiful point, though, isn't it? Just follow the trail of the witness, and the recognition will be undeniable without influence. At best, at the end, the mind will come and say, I see nothing. I want those to come up to me and share with me. And you follow the trail of the witness. And you come to this place where it feels like, I see nothing. I can't be nothing. Those can come up to me and ask me then. Nanta, when I check now, Follow the trail of the witness, as you said. See what it means to follow the trail of the witness? Whatever the object might be, find out who witnesses that. Then find out who witnesses this witness. Now the mind will come and say, but this is infinite regress. Something witnesses the witness, and something will be witnessing that witness. But this is not true. Don't fall into that mind trap. If you're, if you're thinking this, if you're believing this, come up. We'll look together. Because here, in our subtlest discoveries, also the mind can come with a story which can seem very acceptable at times. Like one story can be is, there is nothing. This nothing I want to talk about. The second is if it's giving you the idea that this is pointless, it's just infinitely reversing backwards. Or it might tell you the story that I must only be there now. There must only be awareness of awareness. There must not be any worldly perception. With that also kind of story, if you're buying it, you come. These are all just various forms of mental resistance. So, as you're following the path, as you're following the smell of this witness, where is it coming from? 
all the clues are there important clue is that it does not come and go what is it that does not come and go you will be told that it is this witness that which witness is everything who is this witness Is there really a witness? 